Hey guys, welcome to Code Decode. Today we are going to start with the cloud technologies. So when I started my journey as a cloud developer, I was just asked that this is an application which was running on on-premise server. You have to move it to cloud like Azure or AWS. At that time, I was not aware what was cloud. Why are we moving to cloud? Nobody told me anything. It was just that you have a sprint. You have seven days. You have to move your whole application to cloud. How will I do that is on me. Why will I do that? Nobody knows. So this series we are starting to just help those people who are going to start working on cloud or who are already working on cloud but does not know anything. Why are they doing all this? Please like, share and subscribe to support us. And we are setting a like target of 500 likes. So let's get started. What is cloud and why cloud? So as a very simple definition, we know that cloud is made up of servers and these servers reside in a data centers. Too much of theory, right? Let's understand and just related to our real life, okay? So past, let me ask you, since past three or four weeks, what are we doing? We are doing Java 8 functions on a REST API. So this was our REST API, the find all. And what we were doing is we were doing multiple actions on this find all, like fetch all the employees. When you fetch all the employees, find all the employees whose age is greater than 30, whose many, many such functionalities in Java 8 we have done. Now, if I ask you to step back a bit, and see, this was the REST API we have made to handle our employees. So this was the employee table that we have created. And these were the REST APIs we have opened to the client to hit it and do your task. So if I, if I ask you that, please add an employee, you will hit this post API and hit with the new employee, JSON. And you, this will be, this API is capable enough to add your employee to your table. So this is nothing but onboarding of new employee. If employee changes the city or, or you want to update any kind of details, you will use this put API. Or if any of the employees leaves this organization, then you have to delete that employee. So this is the delete mapping that you're going to use to offboard your employee. So with a very high level and with few more changes, isn't this application capable enough to become a resource management application for any of the small scale industry which is starting to grow initially. So this is something that can be used by resource managers. So this RMG team is going to use this application to onboard and offboard any employee. So what, what do you say? What is this? This is nothing but a server. What is a server? Anything that serves you. So if I am a client, say I am the RMG group, a resource manager, I, I am a client. I want to add my employee to an employee's database. So this is a server. This is going to serve you with what is it going to serve? It is going to serve you an API capable enough to do your task. So what, what we used to do till now was just this. Go find out. You used to hit this server. This server runs the business logic, responds you with this JSON. And these are your data with all of your information about your employee. So this is nothing but a server. When incorporated with a good UI, that is with React or Angular, which gives you a form to add your new employee or gives you a button where on clicking that button, you can delete your employee or offboard your employee from an organization, becomes a whole and soul, a full stack application capable enough to cater your requirement to manage your resources. So far, so good, right? We understand what is a server in our case. Now, suppose I... Only I with a local host URL can add, remove or update data of employees. What if I grow my business and I hire a few more resource managers? If they want to add more employees or update employee or delete an employee from my database, employee database, this database, how can he do that? Now this is a problem. So it's still not a problem. What I can do is I can find my IP address from my command prompt get that IP address here and hit with the 8081 port and then he also will be able to add, remove, update anything in my database saying that my server is up and running all the time. So if this is stopped, then I won't be able to do that. So the thing is, I should be running this server whole and sold ev every time. Then even that case also, if multiple RMG team is there, I'm capable enough to handle tens or hundreds of requests these different resource managers will do. Now, suppose if I expand my company from my base location, say, suppose my base location is like Delhi, Mumbai, anything. If I move to Pune, move to Kolkata, move to 
MP anywhere and I have multiple locations at multiple places in India, then I'll keep this system when I'm working upon as a server machine, keeping my server all time running every time so that any resource manager in any part of India should be able to hit with the IP address. But that doesn't sound good. Why? Because suppose I'm in Mumbai. And if some, some flood comes or something happens to my computer, some, suppose my system crashed, something happens to my system, my PC, my desktop, my laptop, what will happen? The whole resource managed team will be down. They won't be able to onboard, offboard or update any employee. So that is why we should always move from on-premise to cloud because cloud guarantees that not just one system is your server, there are multiple systems who are backups, who are disaster recoveries, who are fault tolerant. So what they do is they, they take this application, uh, the app, the code which you have written and they du duplicate it to multiple servers so that even if one is down, another server is capable enough to respond to you. So even if the Mumbai data server is down, maybe it has some replica at Kolkata, it will respond to you from there. So that is why it is important to just not keep this application as on-premise application, but we should move it to cloud. So that is why cloud. Now let's again get back to what is cloud. So cloud was made up of servers. Now I say that this is my server. Why? Because it is capable enough to serve me with multiple APIs and respond me with the data required. But is this a true server? What if thousands of requests from different resource managers come at to this particular application Will my application be able to entertain it? Answer is no. Why? Because my machine is not capable enough to do that. This is not server. This is a desktop or a laptop or a PC. This is a personal computer. This is not a server. Now, suppose I give you an example. Okay. You are running this application on your system. Suppose you are Facebook. Okay. You have an API to uh, get a request from client and save the photo that they have uploaded to your application. If you're running it on PC and suppose some patch update or security update comes and your system restarts or suppose system corrupts, all the things that are stored in a C drive or your disk is lost. The next day you log into your Facebook and sees all your images are gone. Is this something what you can actually afford? Being a big organization, you cannot afford your data lose. It's the data which makes you a business. So I cannot make my PC a server. Small organization can think about doing it. But these are not servers. Many people mistakenly believe that server is no different from a typical desktop computer. But this is not true. Although many computers with nowadays with i7, high configuration, a good processor, a very good SSD, make your hardware good for server operating system. But that doesn't make sense that you have made a true server. You are not a true server. Even if your desktop computer has similar processor speeds, memory, storage capacity compared to a server, it still is not a replacement for the real server. The technology behind a real server is really different. What is the server made for? If you had a PC, why is server in the market? If I can make my computer with i7 processor very good compute capacity, storage capacity, memory, why is server actually needed? The, is, the answer is again, because server is engineered to manage, store and send data and process data 24 cross 7 and it has to be more reliable than computer desktop and offers a variety of features and hardware that is not typically used in average computer desktop. This PC that I am working upon with this IDEA that is STS where I'm coding is not capable enough to become a server. Even though I have i7 processor, very good processor, everything is there. Still, I'm, I'm not capable enough to become a server. Then what is a server? So you can make a server of two types. So a server can be a hardware or it can be a software. So very first thing, what is a server? A server is nothing but a way to serve resources to client. Now I'll give you an example. If I go to Wikipedia and I search for cloud. So when I asked for a cloud, this is the page that that is received from a server. So what this Wikipedia people have could have done, they have created this page and rather than keeping it to local machine, they have pushed this as a file or as a resource or as a page to a cloud. Now you being a client, when you want to know about cloud, you went to Google. 
that is being a client is a browser you hit and then i need information on cloud the hit goes to a server and from server you get a response so this is nothing but a resource a resource is nothing but an information required by a client and served by a server so here in our case you will ask me what is a resource so employee is a resource which is asked by a client and returned by a server so like wikipedia page is a resource and a server stores this page or a resource and serve it to the client like us like from the browser i hit it so i am a client you are a client you ask about cloud so a server responds with this page or a resource to client like us when it is asked for now the second thing is i say this desktop pc is not a server why because i have windows so to become a server you have two options either you take a server as a hardware device specially configured to a server single purpose like suppose for example i in this system i had suppose i7 processor but a server machine has a very different and specific processor says here this processor is specifically designed for server machines only these are very costly and these are very high configured machines so if you are a very new startup you are just going to start a new business you cannot afford that much of hardware devices as at this point of time what you can either do is you can have a server as a software now you'll ask me how so the answer is that they have given server as an operating system that can be configured in a pc and you can convert your personal computer to a server machine and do multiple task at a time like for example i7 can be considered as an entry level server configuration while a pc with i3 processor is not capable enough to become a server machine because a server machine has to be up and running 24 cross 7 and should be able to handle n number of re uh, requests from the client so that's the difference between your pc and a server so as a small business you might be tempted to save your money by simply running a server operating system on a desktop but that is not a real server hardware for sure in in upcoming time you have to go ahead take a step ahead and take a real server for your business okay so now we have seen what is cloud So cloud is made up of servers and these servers are actually allocated in different parts of this whole world in the data centers. Okay now you'll ask me okay very much about the servers very much about the cloud now you'll ask me why cloud. So moving to the cloud can save money and conven and is convenient for users. So by using cloud computing users and companies do not have to man manage the physical servers themselves or run the software application on their own machine so like i likewise have given you an example right this is my own machine where i'm running at local host 8081 or my ip address 8081 the server is up and running i will be the one who is responsible to maintain this hardware i should make sure that when this application is running on my system my application should not go down my hardware should not get corrupt my hd ssd anything should not get corrupt any hardware failure is what i have to maintain so i need a extra it person to maintain all of these because this is a server machine it should not go down at any cost otherwise my business will affect and how it will affect if today is the last day of an employee you won't be able to offboard that employee and you know what it costs is right when you are not offboarded your full and final settlement might, might get stopped when multiple things can happen this is why it's better not to manage these servers yourself and run your application on it rather what you can do is bundle it up bundle your whole application up move it to cloud and ask these cloud people that please handle your hardware such that my application is not down at any point of time you want to do whatever you want so you can take your server machines you can do fault tolerance you can do disaster recovery you can replicate my data into multiple servers i don't care but my system should not be down for even a single minute this is so convenient by moving to cloud you do not have to manage it but how is it cost efficient cloud will not do it for free of cost it's not sitting there to do anything and serve you with uh, zero downtime application for 24 cross 7 across the whole year they will ask you some penny right but still it is compared renting any kind of server from these big cloud companies is far more cheaper than creating your own servers 
So I've told you server machines since initially is a very costly stuff. They are not your PCs. They are not just the simple desktops. They are not. They are very costly stuff with very high configurations. So let people who are very good in that manage it and you just use these services at a minimal cost. So for businesses, switching to cloud computing removes the IT cost and overhead. For instance, they longer, no longer need to update and maintain their own servers. You don't first of all at all need to purchase it. Secondly, you don't need to maintain and update it. So especially making an impact on a small business, they might not be able to afford their own infrastructure, but what they can do is rather rent or outsource their infrastructure need affordably to cloud. So cloud makes it easier for companies to operate internationally because employees and customers access the same files and application from any location in the world. So that's the beauty of cloud. Okay, too much about cloud, right? Now what is cloud computing? The real term which comes around is cloud computing. So the meaning of compute is to calculate. Now as for the documentation from Azure, simply put, what is cloud computing? Cloud computing is nothing but delivery of computing services. What are these computing services like servers? What does the server do in computing? So you will ask me, see, computing is calculating. What is your server com calculating? Actually, there is no kind of mathematics going around, right? But understand that being a client, you have given me a form. I add my employee name. I add my email address. I add my age and I give it a hit to this API. What service is going doing is it go and save it in the repository and update my database. So these are all services. It's, it's basically nothing but a computation. It takes a whole lot of computation to retrieve that JSON, modify it based on your business logic. So if I had some service layer here, I might have done some validations. I might, might have done some basic check on your email ID. Multiple things I could have done on the business logic. So that is all is considered as computing. So giving this computation power, there are multiple storages. So database is nothing but a service. It stores your data. It, it actually calculates and stores your data. Your store databases, your networking, your software. So this is nothing but a software. What we have created here in like half an hour is nothing but a software. Analytics and intelligence. So these are all the computing services and cloud. Computing is nothing but giving these services at a minimal rental cost over the internet called as cloud. What is cloud? Nothing but group of servers and which are connected with a very low latency, high speed internet to offer faster innovation, flexible resources and economies of scale. So you typically pay only for what you use. It helps in lowering your operational cost. Now you'll ask me why is it like I am uh, just uh, paying for how much I use. So we are going to cover everything, scaling, pay as you go cost, everything we are going to cover as in uh, when we move ahead. So currently, please understand that cloud computing is nothing but delivering these services to you over the high speed, low latency internet to help you develop your business, have the faster innovation, have flexible resources and also cost effective to you. So that was all about uh cloud computing and cloud in the next uh, video we are going to cover the benefits of cloud we are going to cover what all things that will be asked in the certifications we'll make sure that your grounds and your basics are clear before you attempt any kind of certification thank you